Hello everyone, Average Adam here, and welcome to another Hearthstone card discussion. Another adventure is upon us, ladies and gentlemen, and it is the League of Explorers, an amazing new set that has us adventuring the various runes and temples hidden across Azeroth. This one is definitely going to be one of my favorites. It's also the cheapest Hearthstone expansion at just $20. And on top of that, it only runs for four weeks. Five if you count the week they're skipping for Thanksgiving. And it has 45 brand new cards in it. So, without any further ado, let us join the Great Explorers Guild and explore some of these new cards. So, starting off with the Explorers Hat new Hunter card. Two cost, give a minion, plus one, plus one, death rattle. Give it, put it back in your hand, which is pretty awesome. Um, it's kind of a slow card, okay, and it's very expensive for what it does, but the chance to be able to use it over and over and over and over again is really nice. You can really easily get some favorable trades. Like, there's a lot of times where you'll go, I just need plus one, plus one on this guy, and I can trade favorably, keep this guy out for an extra turn, make him waste another card of it, on it. That's why I think Explorer's Hat is a decent card. I don't know if hunters are going to play with it because the current hunter meta does not run those kind of cards, but who knows? It might. And I think it is a very, very nice and interesting card. Next, we got a new hunter secret, the dart trap secret. When you're opposing hero, when an opposing hero power is used, deal five damage to a random enemy. Very nice secret. And uh, it's a type of secret we have never seen before in any of the secret classes. Um, it's an interesting trap. It definitely is. Uh, gives a bit of that randomness to hunters. Hunters already don't have that much randomness, so that's that's kind of nice. I actually like that secret a lot. Maybe we'll see some more secret hunters in the future. All right. Next, we got the Desert Camel, a three-cost two-four beast battle cry. Put a one-cost minion from each deck onto the battlefield. Um, it's a very nice card. It can pull a card out of your opponent's deck that they didn't necessarily want to, or if they're not running any one-cost cards, uh, you can very easily yank them um, out and ruin them, and you get a nice one-cost minion on the field. Also, I like the Desert Camel. It is very interesting. I don't know if any kind of 100 beast decks will run them. They might. It could pull out those web spinners that you didn't get on turn one, which is kind of cool. It, softens, er, it shrinks your deck down a little bit and helps you get the cards that you need. Uh, it's a nice card. I, I think it will see a little bit of use. Uh, not a top contender, but not a bad one either. Next, we're moving into the mage cards. The Forgotten Torch. Three cost, deal three damage. Okay, that's, you know, that's not that good. We have Frostbolt. That's better than that. But you shuffle a Roaring Torch in your deck. That's three cost, deal six damage. So that's actually a very, very nice uh, little tempo loss for a later on tempo gain. Uh, with a nice, cheap, damaging spell. Mages love their spells, and this is a very, very interesting spell that I think mages will have a lot of fun with. I think it might throw one of them in as a mage card. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, next, we got the Ethereal Conjurer. This one is very interesting, and it uses the new keyword in the League of Explorers set, which is Discover. Discover is basically a lot like tracking. Um, when it says Discover a card, three cards appear in front of you. These cards are either from the uh, neutral cards, or they are a class, card, or spell from your class. So when it says discover a spell, three random mage spells are going to appear in front of you. You select one, add it to your hand. Discover is a very nice new keyword, and I absolutely love it. And this is a nice way for mages to pull a spell that they might not actually be running in their deck, and get it and be able to use it to do horrible, horrible things to their opponent. I like it. It's pretty cool. Next, we got the animated armor. 4 cost 4-4, four, four, your hero can only take 1 damage at a time. A very nice new gimmicky thing for mages. I don't know if mages are going to run it, but if they do, it is a very large annoyance that is kind of difficult to difficult to deal with. I mean, how the heck are you going to get rid of this thing? I mean, it could also come out of the uh, piloted uh, sky golem also, which would be kind of cool. So I guess it buffs piloted sky golem a little bit, but yeah, there, there's some really, really... Nice things mages can do with this. It's another annoyance to add. Maybe freeze mages will run it. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, though. Uh, next, we got the Warlock cards. First off, the Dark Peddler. Two cost, two, two, battle cry. Discover a one cost card. So as before, uh, when you play it, three random one cost cards will appear in front of you. They're either Warlock, Spells, uh, Minions, or Neutral Minions. And you get to choose one of the three to add it to your hand, which is really really nice two cost two two and getting another spell that wasn't in your deck that is great value great card um i think zoo might run the card a little bit it's a d decent zoo card i think um yeah, 
it, it's nice. It can get you a one-cost card, too, which also helps you complete your mana curve, which is really awesome. Uh, next, we got the Reliquary Seeker. This, if the last one wasn't a zoo card, this one definitely is. Okay, one cost, one one, battle cry. If you have six other minions, gain plus four, plus four. So, if you run a zoo deck and you already have a board full of minions and just one extra slot open, you're paying one cost for a five five, which is amazing. This very interesting, very specific kind of deck this will run in, but under the right circumstances, you get a lot of value out of it. Welcome to Value Town, as Trump would say. So next we got the Curse of Rafam. Give your opponent a cursed card. While they hold it, they take two damage on their turn. So this is actually a really good card, surprisingly. It's two cost to put a card in your opponent's hand. So if, or in your opponent's, uh, yeah, hand. And while they're holding it, they take two damage. So, um... On their turn so the turn starts off it's gonna do two damage regardless as soon as the turn starts which is which is you know it's meh but they also have to get rid of two mana to get rid of it so it's actually a really cost efficient card because not only are they taking two damage on their turn when it starts but also they have to spend two mana to get rid of it so that's actually a lot of value and I think a lot of people might underestimate this because uh, it, it's it's pretty good I mean I think that warlocks may run this card it's it's decent. It definitely is. And tempo loss against a warlock is really, really dangerous. <laughs> so next, we're going to move on to the shaman cards. First off, my favorite card of the whole set, believe it or not. This card is the Tunnel Trog. One cost for a 1-3, one of those great early game drops. Whenever you overload, gain one attack per overloaded mana crystal. This is going to fix cards like the Dust Devil. It's going to make overload more appealing to people. They've needed a card... Like, Overload is such a punishing mechanic, and a lot of other classes get good cards that have great bonuses without having to suffer, you know, a mana loss later on. But this is a card that benefits from Overload, which is so needed, and it, I think it's going to be the thing that makes Overload decks much more appealing and more people are going to run with them. I definitely am going to be trying this out and seeing what I can pull off with Tunnel Trogs in my Overload deck. All right, so next we got the Rumbling Elemental, four cost, two, six. After you play a Battlecry minion, deal two damage to a random enemy. Basically an oversized knife juggler that only works with Battlecry minions. Um, there's some other cards in this set that have to do with Battlecry, and I think that a Shaman Battlecry deck could definitely see some play. So, very interesting new type for Shamans that could see some potential play in the future. Uh, next we have the... <laughs> A new Murloc card, guys. Every fin is awesome. So, seven cost. Give all of your minions, not just your Murlocs, plus two, plus two. Cost one less for each Murloc you control. Murloc Shaman gets a buff. It's a small mini Bloodlust that could potentially be cheaper than a Bloodlust, which is really nice, I think. And it's permanent, too. It's not till the end of turn. So, great card for those Murloc Shaman players, and I think they're going to be more... Uh, we're going to see them a lot more, let's say that. Uh, next, let's move on to the Paladin card. So first we got the Sacred Trial. Uh, one cost secret, of course. When you your opponent has at least three minions and plays another, destroy it. So the fourth minion that hits the board on the opponent's side will be destroyed. Um, they don't have any minion destroy uh, secrets yet. Now they do, making Secret Paladin even more probable or prob problematic. And... Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a very, very good card, especially with those Secret Paladin Mysterious Jouster decks, and I am scared of it. I am definitely, definitely scared of this card. Okay, next we got the Keeper of Oldemon. Four cost, three, four, battle cry. Set a minion's attack and health to three. Very, very versatile card, because you can use it on an enemy minion to make it a three, three, which trades favorably, favorably with the Keeper of Oldemon. And then... Or you can use it on one of your minions that's maybe about to die, or a low-cost 1-1 Silverhand Recruit that you can turn into a 3-3. Very, very versatile card, and I don't think Paladins have had a lot of cards like this. So, I like this card. It, this is going to see a lot of Paladin play, I think. And finally, Murloc Paladin gets another card, which is really, really interesting. It is... if I can get the card to move here... 10 cost, summon 7 murlocs that died this game. Any fin can happen. 
Very, very interesting card, guys. I think that this is going to be used maybe about one of them in every Paladin Murloc deck. It, basically, Paladin or Murloc decks tend to, if they explode, they're kind of useless later on. They'll see no use. Like, uh, you filled up your deck with Murlocs, they all get destroyed, and you just run out of tempo. Well, let's just bring back seven of the Murlocs that died. Boom, we're back on the field again. Awesome. I don't honestly know if this is going to make Shaman or Murloc Paladin better. Or not Shaman or Murloc. Shaman or, Shaman or Paladin Murloc. Sorry, guys. Voice is a little out today. Uh, don't know which version of the Murloc deck is going to be better, but I think both are going to be very, very powerful going into the future. Uh, next, we got the Priest cards in Tomb. Six cost. Choose an enemy minion, shuffle into your deck. It's basically like a recycle, only it goes into your deck, which could be very interesting it, it immediately removes a minion on the field puts it in your deck so that you can potentially use it later which i think is very very interesting i don't know if priests are going to use this or not but it is something that i might play around with a bit i actually like priests a lot and this could be an interesting card uh next we got excavated evil so five cost deal three damage to all minions well that's okay i guess it's not great it's you know one more expensive than a hellfire but the card gets shuffled into your opponent's deck afterwards, so basically it goes back and forth between the two decks. Uh, it's interesting. Definitely an interesting card. I don't know if it's going to see any play, but it <laughs> makes for some wacky play in the future. Uh, next we got... Okay, this is interesting. They're actually pushing Death Rattle onto two different classes this expansion. They're pushing it onto priests and they're pushing it onto rogues, which is very interesting, especially the rogues. So two cost one two, uh, museum curator, battle cry, discover a death rattle card. So three death rattle cards are gonna appear. It could be either a priest death rattle card or a neutral death rattle card. And it'll appear you select one of them. Uh, death rattle priest isn't something I think I've ever seen before, but this could definitely open it up a little bit not it might not open up right away but this is a card for future death rattle cards or death rattle priest decks which could see play uh next we're going to move on to the rogue cards rogue cards so one cost two one pit snake beast destroy um, any minion damaged by this minion so basically it's got death touch it's like a smaller um Actually, it's a slightly buffed version of the mini assassin guy. Yeah, the patient assassin. Which I don't know why they gave that to this guy. Maybe you can make a deck with patient assassin and this guy. Just have a whole bunch of death touch guys that just wreak havoc. Um, it's slightly... It doesn't have stealth, though. It's got one more uh, attack and it's got the beast affix. As opposed to stealth like the patient assassin. So, I don't know if it'll see play, but it's interesting. Definitely is interesting. Uh, next, we got the Tomb Pillager. <coughs> Ooh, four cost for a 5 4, so it's basically a lost tall strider, but death rattle add a coin to your hand. I like it. It's very nice. It gives coins, which are good for combos, so this could be definitely used as a way to grant more combos in a more combo oriented uh, rogue deck, which never a bad thing, never a bad thing at all. Uh, next, we're going to move on to the Unearthed Raptor, another death rattle card. So, three cost for a 3-4, good stats. Battlecry, choose a friendly minion, gain a copy of its death rattle effect. Ooh, this could be very, very good, right? So, you run this in a death rattle rogue deck, and you can grab a copy of any death rattle card. Uh, you can steal Loot Hoarder or Sylvanas or any of their death rattle effects, and the Unearthed Raptor will steal it and make it its own. Good card, definitely good card. You know, it's only in niche death rattle decks, but I think it could see some play. Opening up new deck types is always something I'm excited about. Uh, next is we on to the Druids, and the probably most versatile card in the entire game, the Raven Idol. One cost, choose one, discover a minion or discover a spell. So once again, you either discover a Druid minion or a neutral minion or a Druid spell. Three of them will pop up in front of you, you choose one and go. A great, great card, so versatile, and I think that a lot of Druids could run this because... Having a way to be able to potentially pull out a card that you need. Maybe there's a certain situation on the enemy's board that you just can't deal with. Well, you can either take a spell or a minion to hopefully potentially come up with a way to clear out um, this stuff. This is a very nice card, and I think druids are going to love it. 
I know I'm going to try running them in my uh, Druid decks and see how they work. Uh, next, we got the Mounted Raptor. So this is basically a lot like the Piloted Sky Golem and the Shredder. Uh, three cost, three two, Beast. So another Beast card for Druids. Death Rattle Summon, a random one cost minion. So something is riding the Raptor and it will pop out later on. So I like that. I like that they kept with the Shredders and they added another version of it, which is really, really cool. It's been a while since they did that. Um, nice card. I, th I think they might run it. Uh, Beast Druid, I don't think is going to be viable yet. People have been, they've been trying to make it viable. Uh, they've been adding more and more cards to it, but only time will tell if it will become, uh, a actual useful Druid, uh, deck type. Uh, next we got the final Druid card, the Jungle Moonkin. Four cost, four, four. Both players have spell damage plus two. Huge spell damage card. It's also a beast, so it might make Beast Druids a little more likable. Uh, but the issue, of course, is your opponent also gets spell damage plus two. So it's got a little bit of a drawback to it, but it could be useful. You know, it could see some play, and Beast Druid getting two more cards could be just what it needs to get growing, uh, to get up there in the game. Speaking of Beast cards, they added one to the Warrior, uh, oddly enough. The Fierce Monkey, three cost, three, four, taunt. It's a very basic card, but it is a beast, so that's definitely interesting. Um, which also means that, uh potentially hunters could pull this card out too uh it's a decent card you know another boy uh, bolster card i don't think that any uh i don't think that any warriors are going to run it unless they're running a heavy taunt deck they might put one of these in it but you never know it's another interesting card i love the banana on the shield it is definitely very very nice artwork i'll, I'll say that much and fine now we got the only uh weapon to be added in the entire set and it's very very dangerous the cursed blade one cost for a two three weapon amazing stats but doubles all the damage dealt to your hero so you can't really use it for trades favorably because you'll be taking huge damage with it like huge huge damage <coughs> and there's no way to silence weapons at this point so i don't really see a time when this weapon will be useful i it might be it might not i honestly don't know it it does nerf the uh the bling tron a little bit giving a potential really bad weapon to somebody i don't know it it might see play it might not this one totally has a lot of people wondering is it good is it bad we don't really know but most people are leaning towards bad i think uh now we got the obsidian destroyer seven cost seven seven at the end of your turn summon a one one scarab with taunt it's got dr boom like stats uh but it summons one one taunt so it think of it like an overgrown hogger that's a bigger body and if you don't destroy it, you'll be constantly getting some more little taunt minions, which could be good in taunt uh, warrior decks. So we'll have to wait and see if this one's any good, but I think it could see some definite play in the near future. Uh, next, we got the... Let's go into the neutral cards. Uh, the commons first, the Jeweled Scarab. This one was showing off for a 2 cost for a 1-1 one, one beast. It is a beast, so <clears throat> hunters may see it. Battle Cry, discover a 3 cost card. So it could be any 3 cost card... Uh, that is for the class that you are using or neutral cards. So, very, very nice. I think it will see some play here and there. Um, and I think that Dru or not Druids, uh, actually Druids could, and also so could uh, Hunters be using this in their Beast decks. I just thought about that. That could actually be very good. Um, I think it might get tinkered around with a little bit with them. Uh, next, and I'll... Also, it works with Battle Cry effects, and there's going to be some new Battle Cry stuff coming out too that could make this very useful. Uh, next, we got the Huge Toad. <laughs> two cost for a 3 2 Death Rattle. Deal one damage to a random enemy. Um, it's a beast, so it might see beast play. It's got decent stats and a very interesting Death Rattle effect. That I, It's not great, but it might see some play. You never know. It's For its stats, it, it, is, it is value for its stats. It's a decent card, but. Well, only time will tell if it's going to be a good card. We'll have to wait and see. It's a nice nice common, though. They, they've definitely made the commons a lot more appealing in this set. Next, we got the Tomb Spider. Another beast card. There's so many beast cards in this set, actually. I think that beast decks could see a thing. Four cost, three for three, beast. Battle cry, discover a beast. So remember, it's either going to be from your class or a neutral uh, beast. Um, very interesting. I like it. I like that beasts are getting a lot of love this set. They actually might be very val valuable going into the near future. Even more so than uh, Beast Hunter was before. 
Uh, very nice. And then we'll move on to the Gorilla Bot A3, the only mech in the set. Four cost for a 3-4 mech. Yeah, kind of bad stats, but if you already have another mech on the battlefield, you'll discover a mech. So once again, it's a mech of your class or a neutral mech. Very nice. A uh, good way to pull out a specific mech that you might need to help you fill out what you got on the board or in your hand, which is very awesome. I actually like this a lot. <clears throat> uh, this is going to be a not really a staple in, in mech decks. It might be a staple, but it's going to be definitely a new tool for mech decks to play around with that I think they will very much love. Uh, next, we got the Anubisath Sentinel. Five cost for a 4-4 four, four death rattle. Give a random friendly minion 3-3. Three, three. Basically, it's an overgrown uh, cultist that, you know, it's huge. You know, it's for its stats. It's not that good, but it gives away more stats if it dies. It makes it a good silence target, and it makes people not want to destroy it first because they have to destroy everything else on the board before they destroy it. An interesting card. It might see some play, but uh, once again, only time will tell. <clears throat> Next, we got the Fossilized Devil Soar. Eight cost for an 8-8. Eight, eight if you control a beast, gain taunt. Well, this one I'm a little kind of on the fence about because it's pretty much the exact same as the Druid 888 taunt, um, except that you may not get the taunt unless you control a beast. I don't know if it's going to be great, but, you know, time will tell. Maybe it will see a little play here and there. It's an interesting card and definitely one that you could show up at unexpected times to turn the tides of battle. Next, we have the absolute cutest card in the entire game. It is Murloc Tiny Fin. Zero cost, 1-1 one, one Murloc. Very basic card. It's essentially a Wisp, but it's slightly better than a Wisp, which is kind of tough to say because it's not. But it does have the Murloc affix, which means it gets all the Murloc bonuses. I don't know if Murloc decks are going to run it because it's really not that good. I mean, they might, but Murlocs, you know, Murlocs do get bonuses and stuff, so we'll... We'll see if they run it or not. It, it's interesting. It definitely is an interesting card, but we'll have to, of course, wait and see what happens to see if he gets any use. He's definitely adorable, and I love him. Uh, next, we got the Eerie Statue. Four cost, seven, seven. It can't attack unless it's the only minion on the battlefield. Amazing stats, like tremendous stats. Uh, but it can't attack unless it's the only minion on the battlefield. <clears throat> if your opponent doesn't have minions, then it's a great card. It'll just slam into your, their faces and stuff. If it isn't, it's always a definite good taunt drop. Uh, put a taunt on it with a Sun Fury Protector or a uh, the other card that gives taunt. And it is it could be very, very good. It's like an overgrown Ancient Watcher, which is really, really nice. In fact, Ancient Watcher is, is uh, two cost for a 4-5. This is four cost for a 7-7, seven, seven, which is amazing. I mean, it's really, really good. I think this card could see some play in uh, decks like Handlock and stuff, which is really nice. Uh, next, we're going to move on to the Summoning Stone. I like this card. 5 cost for a 0-6. Whenever you cast a spell, summon a random minion of the same cost. It's just like the Tavern Brawl we had a while back uh, that had that same effect. <clears throat> I like, But like the other uh, uh, card that's like this, which is the Warlock uh, Summoning Portal, it's kind of weak for what it is, and it relies on you having an extra card. So like the Summoning Portal, I'm worried this one could fade into Oblivion. But the fact that it spells into minions actually might make it useful. So if you play it late game, maybe on turn 10, 5 cost, play a, a 4 cost minion, maybe a Fireball, and then get a 4 cost minion on top of it. This could actually see some play and be very interesting. It makes it for a target that needs to be destroyed because it could potentially bring out any minion in the game. You really don't know. So, very interesting card, a new random effect. I love random effects. Uh, next, we got the Ancient Shade. Four cost for a 7-4. Uh, it's basically one cost less than Fugan and Stalag, but it has a horrible battle cry. Shuffle an Ancient Curse into your deck that deals 7 damage when you draw it. Um, very, very scary. It's like an insanely scary card, because the Ancient Curse... Uh, that deals 7 damage and then allows you to draw a card afterwards could hurt you a lot. But then again, think of this in a Priest deck with Akanai Soul Priest on the field. It could potentially be a 7 heal. Think about that, huh? Very interesting. I think that this card might be played in some Priest decks as a really powerful 
uh, big minion. With Akanai Soul Priest on the field, getting yourself a potential 7 heal later on can be very good as well. Very interesting card. Um, it's not great in any particular deck, but I think Priest might tinker around with it a little bit. Uh, next we got the Wobbling Runts. These guys are kind of funny in World of Warcraft. Uh, 6 cost for a 2-6. Not great stats, but when it dies, you get these three uh, Wobbling Runts. Rascally, Willy, and Grumbly Runt. And they are very funny. I love their artwork. Uh, so essentially you're paying 6 cost for a 6, for a 2-6, and 3 other 2-2s. Two which is definitely worth the cost, I think. Uh, if it gets silenced, of course, it wastes the silence, which is really good. It blows the silence on your opponent. Um, it's a very nice card. I think uh, Death Rattle might see it a little bit. A great way to flood the board easily. Uh, if you run uh, Baron Rivetair, you can get six 2-2 two -two runs on the board and then follow it up with a Bloodlust or something. This de card definitely has a lot of versatility, and I think it could see a lot of play in the near future. Next, we got the Naga Sea Witch. Five cost five five. Your cards cost five. All your cards, which is very very interesting because if you play this on turn ten, you can play pretty much any card in the game following it up, which is huge. I mean, absolutely amazing. I think this uh, could see some play in very niche decks, but only time will tell as it, as before. So, uh, next we got the Genie of the Zephyrs. Uh, this one five cost four six. Whenever you cast a spell on another friendly minion cast a copy of it on this one great in buffer decks so like priests or paladins that use power word shield or uh, blessing of kings great great card i think um it, for buffer decks and buffer decks have been something that haven't really been a thing but i think with the conclusion of this card they could definitely see a lot more play in the near future uh next we got the first of five legendaries that are in this set not a lot in this set but Definitely some interesting ones. This is Arch Thief Rafam. And Arch Thief Rafam is the main antagonist of this expansion. Uh, to help you get the staff for origination, he's going to steal it from you and you got to get it back. Uh, nine cost for a 7 8. Not great stats, but Battle Cry. Discover a powerful artifact. So, what is a power artifact, you may ask? Well, they're very powerful 10 cost cards. There are three of them. Uh, the first of which is the Mirror of Doom. 10 cost, fill your board with 3-3 three, three Mummy Zombies. And the Mummy Zombies are very, very powerful looking 3-3s three, that fill the board up, which is very cool. Then you have the Timepiece of Horror. Deal 10 damage randomly split among all enemies. So very, very, very large Avenging Wrath. And then finally, the Lantern of Power. Give a minion plus 10 plus 10. The cool thing about Rafam is that you get a card that immediately the next turn follow up is a game breaking card that could potentially change the entire game. I think Rafam is going to see a lot of play and possibly he is the best card in this entire set. You don't get immediate value out of him but the following turn you get an amazing card and your opponent doesn't know which of the three cards you chose so they have to prepare for any eventuality of this card which is amazing. Uh, next we'll move on to the League of Explorers themselves, the four of them. Uh, great cards, all four of these guys are amazing. First off, Bran Bronzebeard, everyone's been waiting for this guy, and he has an effect that I've been waiting for someone to have this effect. Three costs for a 2-4, your battle cries trigger twice, opening up for a battle cry variant of deck. They've been there, they, they have been there, but they ha they've needed a couple things. And Bran Bronzebeard, I think, is the icing on the cake that is going to open up four Brattle Cry decks to take effect. I love it, and I'm going to definitely tinker around with Battle Cry decks and see if they are going to be useful coming into the future here. Love it, love it, love it. And next, we're going to move on to Sir Finley Murgleton, the Gentleman Murloc. One cost, one three, a great one drop. Uh, and it is a Murloc, so it does get Murloc bonuses. Battle Cry, discover a new basic hero power. So, if you're running a Murloc deck, maybe your hero power is not the best. Like, I can imagine that Shaman might not want the hero power they have. They might want something a little better to complement their Murlocs. So when this pops up, three random basic hero powers of the nine basic ones will appear, and you select one and continue on your way. Great legendary card. It will be terrific in Murloc decks. Maybe even some other decks might play around with it also, because it is a great one drop at a 1-3. Not every class has access to a one cost 1-3 uh, turn one drop, so could see some play, definitely. Uh, next, we got the 
Uh, Reno Jackson, six cost for a four six. Battle Cry, if your deck contains no more than one of any card, fully heal your hero. Opening up once again for another new type of deck that relies on having no duplicates of anything in the entire deck. Uh, I like this card a lot, and I like that there's so many new deck types opening up with this set, and that's something that I think is the most desperate need in this game right now, is when new cards come out, they need to open up new deck types for new for each class, for more classes, which is something that this set is really, really heavily doing, and I am so thankful for that. Um, the last expansion added a lot of new cards, but still, there are just a lot of things that this game still needs to open up and become even greater. Uh, next we got Elise Starseeker, the final card I think I will be revealing. Yep, the last card. Uh, four cost for a 3-5 battle cry. Shuffle the map to the golden monkey into your deck. Uh, it, this is a three-part card, which has an amazing effect at the end. So you play her, and the map to the golden monkey goes into your deck. What is the map to the golden monkey? It's a two-cost card that when you use it, shuffle the golden monkey into your deck and draw a card. Uh, once again, moving forward, and you could potentially draw the Golden Monkey himself. Four costs for a 6-6 six, six, Taunt. Battle Cry. Replace your hand and deck with legendary minions. Oh my gosh. Amazing effect, guys. Absolutely amazing. It's a three-part card, so it's kind of hard to pull off, but if you're able to pull it off, it's an amazing new effect that changes your entire deck and makes you very, very difficult to deal with. So guys, that is the League of Explorers expansion. Uh, it is going to be amazing. I can't wait for it to get started. Uh, I love Hearthstone expansions. I love Hearthstone in general. And this one definitely is, I think, adding the most as far as the expansions. It's adding more cards than any other uh, adventure previous to date. And a lot of those cards are opening up for new deck types. Uh, helping to put the icing on the cake for certain de deck types that we're still lacking. Adding a lot of new beast cards, adding a great new affix with Discover, um, adding a lot of new cards, that a lot of Murloc cards, which is kind of cool. There's just so many new things in this set that I think is going to make Hearthstone even more fun, and I can't wait to play around with this, these new cards in the future. Uh, more Hearthstone videos, guys, coming pretty soon. A lot more, uh, ugh, a lot more videos in general on my channel. So stay tuned, stay tuned, guys. And we will see you in uh, the next video, guys. Have a terrific day. Artstone's on the way. Have a good one, guys.